everybody. So in a recent video, I talked about uh, how I have a little bit of a problem with my, my hands as far as like developed a, a strain injury. So uh, I just wanted to take you guys along to the range. Uh, I'm going to be working on my grip. Uh, it's been a day since I really was a little concerned about it, but my hands feel fine. I was able to do a little bit of dry practice and uh, the grip seemed pretty solid. Not really a big issue like with my calluses. Now a little bit of secret of what I've used. I've used olive oil and I've used the FUBAR CLP that I highly recommend. It's FUBARCLP.com if you want to get your own. It's not exactly the cheapest, but it's pretty much a do-all and I have I, I'm not going to say I vetted it because I don't think I'm really an authoritarian source for that, but uh, I've used it a lot. It works pretty good as a mosquito repellent. I forgot mine, so I'm probably going to get eaten up in this video, but whatever, I'm fine with it. This is just a quick little uh, range session. I don't have much ammo, maybe 100 rounds, but I'm running my MP Compact. I'm loving this thing. It has less recoil than my Glock 23. In, even though it's a Gen 4, and I put, a, put in a fresh recoil spring that I got from Glock, confirmed kill on a mosquito woohoo uh, but anyways this thing has less recoil than the Glock 23 very gentle MPs typically are and I'm actually looking in the future at getting the uh, 2.0 compact in 4 inch that way I have a little more versatility now this one is a good e all around EDC but that one will be more versatile of uh, something I can carry that's bigger if I have the opportunity so I can swap between the two guns and not really lose much Granted, if I wanted to remain consistent, uh, I could get uh, the 2.0 subcompact, which has even a better grip, because I do notice a little bit of slippage on this, uh, but I think it's more of an illusion just because I have sweaty hands. But anyways, enough jabbering aside, I'm just taking you guys along with uh, what I'm doing to kind of work on my grip. I don't know what this motion was, but deal with it. <laughs> so anyways, let's go ahead and get started and load up some mags. Okay, so I'm just shooting at seven yards. I'm just gauging my ability to control the recoil with a grip technique that I'm using where I'm basically, I'm using my ring finger on the magazine that's flush, no pinky extension to get offer uh, pinky support because, you know, the ring finger is still a power finger. However, whenever I shoot this, I, my pinky somewhat gets on the grip uh, just at the bottom portion, but it's not enough to sustain it during recoil. So, uh, it's kind of a problem, but uh, I'm just seeing if I can do this because if I put my pinky under here, it drags my other fingers down, and obviously that's not a very good grip, but I'm trying to work on my grip technique. and So I'm just bringing you guys along, and I'm going to show you a little bit of notes of how I'm self-analyzing. Okay, so... I felt like I wasn't really doing a very good job of uh, controlling the gun with two hands. I was basically concentrating on this hand, and this one was almost cosmetic. And what I mean by that is it's just it's just there, but it's not really squeezing down and uh, trying to help control the gun. And that's something I have to work on, but m most of my focus is trying to control it with this hand, because this one is the one that feels like it slips. Uh, but that's one thing to really work on is to pinch it and then use my power fingers on both hands to pinch down on the lower portion. So that's what I'm going to try this time with the pinky extension. Okay, so... <clears throat> So what I'm noticing with that is, it's kind of interesting, um, it seems like the harder I grip it, the more I'm getting recoil in my hand, it does it, it it's getting more aggressive uh, when I hold it tighter. Uh, M&Ps generally don't seem to uh, hurt my hand all that well, uh, or all that much, uh, in the 40 caliber, but... The Glocks definitely are a bit violent, and they do chew up my calluses, and, you know, they work on my calluses quite a bit. Uh, but, you know, it, this thing seems like a softer recoiling gun, uh, even than the Glock 23, which is bigger and should offer a better control, but this is a little bit heavier still. Um, but 
it is comfortable but it's basically now getting on par as far as like flip and uh, vibration uh, feedback as far as like felt recoil you know the vibration you get in your hand I'm getting basically the same amount of that but it's not chewing up my hand so eh, yeah, it is what it is let's see how it works with the with the uh, flush fitting magazine though okay so same as before trying to get uh, you know good good pinch with both hands so I'm gonna concentrate on that diminished amount of fingers on the gun but maybe it'll take down the perceived recoil a little bit because I'm losing a little bit of strength but maybe the gun will go back on its own a little better I don't know that's really just gonna be an evaluation uh, that I the reason why I'm doing this evaluation So, okay, so it does actually give less uh, perceived recoil. It goes back pretty much on its own, just like with the pinky extension. But I think maybe me being capable of gripping it harder um, it gives that better perception. It's pushing it more into my palm, and it's bypassing the fat or muscle, so I don't really have much cushion. So I'm feeling it in my wrist because I'm locking it up, so the shock's going straight into this area that's already sensitive. That's what I'm thinking is happening. That's my theory because of where I'm feeling it. So, you know, I'll do it again. I'm going to do it over and over and try to get a better understanding of what's going on and a better idea of how I can control this gun better. I hate doing this static stuff, but it's necessary to focus and uh, get a good diagnosis and concentrate on uh, these uh, different things to kind of see my performance and how this pistol performs. So... I mean, I'm, I'm thinking maybe trade this thing in for the 2.0 subcompact, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to be trading in my full size and uh, uh, looking at getting the uh, 2.0 compact, but, you know, that will take a little bit of time. Uh, so hopefully that will be a good comparison to the Glock 23 because it is its size and, uh, you know, bare length contender and everything. It's its exact size doppelganger. So... Anyway, we're not Dr. Ganger, but uh, Nemesis. And I gotta pick up my hearing protection. So, anyways, let's go ahead and load up again and uh, reevaluate again. Okay, so now pinky extension, confirming that the vibration is going into my hand aggressively. Stormtrooper status. Okay, so those last shots uh, were, I did feel the vibration, but again, I'm, I am recovering from uh, some, some wrist problems, so that actually makes sense. Uh, I just got to make sure to do my stretches and stuff and keep those bones apart and those joints from compressing, and I can make good progress establishing this grip, and I am focusing on using all fingers. A lot of people don't. A lot of people... Um, uh, dismiss the pinky and I think that is a little bit of an underestimation if you have the room for the pinky and you're able to carry a gun that it, that uh, isn't going to be affected in concealability uh, then you should use the pinky and actually what I mean by that is actually use it for the grip because our grip is stronger when we're using all of our fingers again from my last video you don't have this, you're only able to get about 50%. I mean, you can work up and increase your pressure or whatever, but, I mean, you, you know, it, it's, you're losing a, a, a benefit there. If you can carry a bigger gun, then carry a bigger gun, get more capacity and stuff like that. Or in this case, just use a pinky extension and with a gun that you're already comfortable with. So anyways... I'm going to continue on, but that's about the end of the video. Uh, that's my diagnosis. I'm going to continue on getting my reps in and getting practice in, and I'm going to try to incorporate a bit of movement, so I'm not going to really bore you too much. I'll do a couple of uh, snippets, but that's pretty much the end of the video. I appreciate you guys watching. Go ahead and leave a comment below, uh, but again, uh, be careful with your hands. Take care of them. Get a good amount of olive oil. You know, Take care of your shooter bump You know, right here where it goes underneath the trigger guard. I mean, realistically, you should be able to grip the gun enough to where it does end up forming those calluses. That's a sign of a good grip. Uh, but take care of them to keep them from getting painful. 
do stretches and stuff like that. Don't get a, a repetitive strain injury. So, uh, like I have, and I, I gotta be very careful. But anyways, I appreciate you guys watching, and you guys have a good one. Okay, so I had a serious problem there. Uh, when I inserted my uh, pinky extension magazine, uh, basically there wasn't a bore obstruction, but typically with the old school MMPs, if you just force the magazines home with a lot of gusto, like I typically do, it's just a habit to force it in, uh, it can close prematurely. And I think during the vibration, it, uh, during the slam home, I think it was on its way forward before it was actually ready and it caused uh, it caused it to scuff or or whatever and it actually kind of I, I think the neck area where the uh, rifling starts you get a little bit of a neck uh, chamber neck and I think it scuffed the polymer and kind of stopped it and I was just trying to force it in with a couple of taps as you saw uh, but that's a great illustration for um, why the 2.0 will probably be a better option for any of you serious shooters that will actually smack the magazine home because uh, that's a problem that I didn't have until I actually got this uh, pistol to about a thousand rounds. Uh, but now, it's going to be very easy to do. Maybe changing the slide stop uh, or slide release lever would actually work to mitigate that a little bit. But um, I can't really trust that. So, it looks like I'm going to have to spend a little more money uh, getting uh, the 2.0 version just to be safe. I don't want that happening if I would have to do a reload likelihood is low but again you know it is what it is uh, so uh, just a little bit of an investment for peace of mind overall my decision my money all right so anyways I appreciate you guys watching you guys have a good one